the command boot set default will allow you to specify the default flash on boot. So you could use this to set the primary image back to the default. At the moment the default boot is secondary. But let's test this image. So I'm not going to change it. Once again typing show ver shows me that the boot image is secondary. Show flash shows me that the default boot is secondary. So let's see if this image is stable and functions as expected. So I'm not going to go back to the previous image. Now it's possible to back up your configurations to a TFTP server. And you can do that by typing the command copy, startup config as an example, TFTP, specify the IP address of the TFTP server. As you can see here, 3 cdaemon is showing that this is the IP address of the server. Specify the file name. In this case, let's call it hp5406zl.cfg. Hit enter. As you can see here, the server received a file and it's popped up on our hard drive. So double click on that and you can see the configuration that we've created. So it's as simple as that to back up the configuration. Now you could copy the running config to the TFTP server as well. So as an example we could say copy running config TFTP specify the IP address 10.0.0.249 and let's give it a name of run 5406.cfg. Notice the file has been copied here. Notice the TFTP server received the file. So double click on that and you can see there's our running config. Just to prove that let's change the name to router1. Do the same command again. Notice we're getting a transport error because we're not allowing overwriting of existing files. That's just a setting in TFTP. So we'll just check this little box that says allow overwrite of existing files. Click OK. Do that again. You can see the file was successfully received. Double click on the file name and you can see here that the host name is now router1. So that's how you copy both your running config and startup config to a TFTP server. I'll just change the host name back to router. Now many E-series switches allow you to define three different startup configuration files. So when a switch supports this feature, you can configure the switch to use one configuration file whenever the switch is restarted and use the other files as backups of earlier configuration states. This is great because when you're testing features for example you can quickly return back to a configuration that you know is working if you have any issues. What's also nice is that you can associate different configuration files with different software images and flash. So you could have different configurations for different software images. So on our 5406 as an example if we type the command show config files you can see that there are two config files config1 and base config. Config1 is currently active and is used when we use the secondary image. Base config is what's used when we use the primary image. Config1 is the default configuration file and is by default associated with both primary and secondary flash. You can view the details of individual config files by typing the command show config and then specify the name such as config1. So there's the configuration that forms part of config1. By the same token I could specify base config and that's the configuration of the base config. So you can easily view the configurations that have been saved by simply typing show config and the name of the file that you want to view. You can also copy config files 
by typing the command copy config and let's say config1 and then specify where you want to copy it to so you might want to copy it to a TFTP server or config and specify a new name so let's call this test config so typing the command show config files shows me that I now have a new config file called test config. It's however not associated with either the primary flash or secondary flash. You can change that by typing the command startup default config and then the name of the file. You asked a question. This will change the default configuration file to be used whenever the switch is rebooted. Are you happy with that? Yes or no? So I'm going to say yes. So now typing the command show config files, you can see that both the primary and secondary flash image are using this file called test config. Now if we boot the system by typing the command boot system, this test config file will now be used and any changes made would be saved to the test config file, not to config1. If you want to change that behavior, you simply type the command startup default config and you could set it back to using config1. So show config files shows you now that the active configuration is config1. Notice test config was still not the active configuration because we needed to boot the system to make it active. Config1 was still the active config. Now what we've done is we've said that config1 will be used when we reload or reboot the system and config1 is associated with both primary and secondary flash. You can change that behavior by typing the command startup default and then for instance specifying primary config file and then for instance saying test config. So now typing the command show config files shows that when the primary flash is used the test config file will be used but when the secondary flash image is used config1 will be used. So different config files will be used for different flash images. Just remember you need to reboot the switch by typing the command boot system to force the use of a separate or different config file. At the moment the config file that's active is config1. But if we boot it from the primary flash of the switch, test config would be used, not config1. The command show logging allows us to view the event log. So show logging shows me events that have taken place. There are various options. So for example, if we use W, it shows me warnings or major events. So you can see there was a cold reboot, which I would say is a major event. So once again, there it is. We could look at I, which is just info. So there's going to be a lot more information there or D shows me debugging information. So a lot of information is available. Another nice option is R which shows me information in the reverse time order basically showing me the most recent events first. So you can see that the most recent change was the startup config was changed by the CLI. And you can see it's sequence 10 going down to all the events. That concludes this video demonstrating how to upgrade the operating system of HP E-Series switches. In this video, I explained the architecture of HP E-Series switches. I showed you how to download and upgrade the operating system of a switch. I showed you how to work with the configuration files on a switch. I showed you how to backup your configuration and interpret the event log on a switch. Thank you for watching.